In today's video, we will do a setup tutorial for hosting as a website builder, and we'll also do a review of hosting as a website builder. So I'm gonna build two websites, one of them using a hosting a template, and the other one using hosting an AI. We're gonna build a garden website using two methods, one with AI and one with the template approach. So I'm gonna compare, and I'm gonna tell you what I think. Compare this to using WordPress as well. So we're gonna break it into those few steps. We're gonna start by setting up and doing the AI setup, doing the template setup. We'll do a customization of the full website. So we'll be going through all the main features of the actual website builder, how all these things work in practice when you're building a website with hosting as website builder. And then finally, I'll get into the review with pros and cons. I'll talk about hosting as builder versus WordPress. Also, who's it for? I think um, besides WordPress users, I think there's some really good opportunity for like people who use Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, those kind of products to get some more um, cost-effective value by using something like hosting as website builder as well. So if all that sounds interesting, then keep watching. To get started with the hosting website builder, you'll need a hosting plan. So I wanted to talk about the differences between these plans just briefly before we get started. If you head to the link in the description, you can compare them for yourself here. So the hosting website builder, it's included on all these plans at the moment. I'm using a cloud startup plan, which I like because of its WordPress performance. But if you're not using WordPress, um, either of these plans will perform really well with the hosting at website builder. Both of these come with 100 websites. This one comes with 300. But if we scroll down to the actual hosting at website builder here, you'll see the difference. Um, this one has all the features, including e-commerce and some of these AI features. Um, the hosting website builder on the basic plan has um, just, just the website builder, but doesn't have the e-commerce or the AI features. So those are the main things in terms of differences. The other thing people ask me about is support because uh, the cloud plan has priority support and these ones don't. It's not really that big of a deal because I've actually used the business plan and I've used the cloud plan and I thought support in both cases was very good. Um, in this case, it's gonna be faster, so you won't wait as long. But even when I want support on the business plan, it only took a few minutes in my experience. So it's still very good support, even um, even though it doesn't have that green tick, you still have chat support and it's still very good. It's just not quite as fast as the support you'll receive on this one. So overall, in terms of my recommendation, I would say if you just want the hosting a website builder with all the features, including the e-commerce features, this one would be the one to go for. If you wanna use WordPress as well as the hosting a builder, go with the cloud startup. If you just need basic websites, no WordPress, this one will do just fine. So those are the um, recommendations I'd make in terms of choosing your plan. I also did a previous video where I tested this one in terms of its performance against some other popular web hosts, and this one did really well. If you wanna check the description, you can watch that video as well. I'd recommend it if you're interested in that one. But let's go ahead and check out the cart. There's one more tip I should give you. When you're actually ordering any of these plans, head down to the uh, coupon code down here. Have a coupon code. And remember to put in the code IDEASPOT. They were nice enough to give me my own code. That's actually going to give you an extra 10% off the already discounted prices. So totally worth um, adding that coupon code in if you're interested in signing up to Hostinger. So with that out of the way, let's head to our dashboard and let's start building a website with the hosting at website builder. So from our hosting management page here, we can actually add a website here. And this gives us a nice onboarding process. So I'm gonna create a website, let's go next. And here you can choose WordPress or hosting a website builder. We've focused on WordPress in the past. So if you wanna check that out in our previous video, I'll link to those in the description. But today, let's try the hosting a website builder. That one is listed as beginner friendly. So um, let's try that out, hit next. So here we can put in a domain or a subdomain. Um, for this example, I'm gonna use the domain I've already registered on here um, on Ideaspot Online. And I'm gonna use Gardens Ideaspot Online. So that's one I'm gonna use for today. I'm gonna try building a local business style gardening website for this example. So there we go, I'm gonna hit next. So at this point you can choose, you can do the AI build or you can use a template build down here. You'll notice that link is a bit hidden because I think they really wanna promote AI these days, but I actually really like the pre-made templates. So in this video, I'm gonna use both. First we'll do the AI and then later on in the video, I'll show you the pre-made templates as well. Cause I think these are quite nice, but let's go ahead with the AI builder. So here we just fill this out, which is our website type. I'm gonna go with the business showcase and put our brand name and a description in here. So I'm gonna call mine Ideal Gardens and we're gonna put a description in um, for the AI to generate the website. So Ideal Gardens is a local gardening service located in Sydney, Australia. We specialize in mowing, lawn care, pruning, planting and pest control. Personalization settings, we can actually open that and we can choose a color palette from here as well. So I think for a gardening website, let's go with that green color palette there. And now we can go ahead and create the website. 
So this is saying it's getting ready and we just have to wait for that progress bar to complete. All right, so after a few seconds, this is what it's come up with here. We've got a background video and we've got our text and our images are all based on our prompt here. So it's got gardening related images and text related to what we gave it during that setup process. Overall, I'd say the design is pretty good and the images are pretty relevant. Um, but running this several times, I noticed that design is pretty similar. The only thing that changes is the images and the text. So you could run this for say, if you were doing like a mechanic website, it would change it to mechanic related text, mechanic related images, for example. Um, but the actual uh, visual styling is gonna be pretty similar. It's really the content that changes based on the AI creation. But from here, all you do is just customize the text and the images according to your preferences. You can also change this um, background video as well quite easily. Um, but that's all very easy to do with this um, website builder. What I want to show you now is the template setup because I think you get more actual design selection choices if you use a template rather than using the AI. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's the same process from our hosting management page. We're gonna go ahead and add the website and create and next. Again, we use the hosting and website builder. This time I'll go with gardening idea spot online. Let's go next. And now let's head down to use our pre-made templates. So here you've got hosting as a website templates and these all work with the same website builder. So once you've built the website, um, the editing process is exactly the same as what we did uh, with the AI one, but you've got all these categories to choose from. And I actually think these ones have a bit more production value to them than just what is uh, created by an AI. So if we scroll down, we can preview them. The one I quite like is on page two. Which I wanna use this one for our gardening website, this one here. It's a home building website, but I think this would make a good gardening website as well. So I'm gonna select that one there. So after a few seconds, this will load up in our editor. Now I actually think this one is a bit nicer in terms of its look and feel uh, compared to the AI one that we did a few seconds earlier. This one definitely looks like it's had a bit of a designer's touch. And um, you can see uh, the use of white space, the different shapes, placing uh, the columns like that. You've got a parallax effect there on the background section there. And you've got these uh, circular effects on these images at the bottom. So I think this one definitely is a bit nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one and show you how easy it is to work in this uh, hosting and website builder. First up, let's change these images to gardening related images here. So let's select the uh, section and we've got a gallery section here. So we can manage the gallery with that icon there. Just add images here. What we can do is we can find free images from Unsplash there. Um, we can generate I. AI images, and we can actually upload our own images, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So I've already prepared some photos I got from pexels.com and I did a few logos and icons in Canva as well earlier. So I'm gonna upload all these onto our server. Let's go ahead and do that. And after a few seconds, these will have uploaded under my library there. So those are our new gardening photos. And let's go with these three, this one and this one, and maybe this one here. There we go, add to the gallery. And I'll just remove these ones from the gallery. So now I've got three of our gardening related ones there. Looks pretty cool. I might actually change this one because I'm not in love with the composition of that. So let's go with something else. Maybe this one here, let's try that. And let's remove that one and let's see how that looks. I think this is probably better. So let's go with this. All right, so that covers our gallery. Now, the first time you use this builder, it's really nice to actually use this checklist here. So they've got a essential website set up checklist here. So we've started our website journey here and we can go through some of the tasks that you usually need to get your website off the ground. So edit the heading text. Um, it walks you through step-by-step step how to get things done. So in terms of changing this text, instead of saying quality without compromise, I might say quality gardening services and delete that without compromise bit there. So that's how you do that. And now looking at our checklist, we can see that we've edited a heading text and also counts as editing paragraph text as well. Um, what I want to show you with the paragraph text though, if we go ahead and select this paragraph um, and edit the text, um, we can edit it here manually. We can also, if we go back, we can use the AI writer to edit some text here as well. So we can give it a prompt and it'll generate some text. Let's try something short here. 40 words promoting our local Sydney-based garden business. Create the text. So we can see here, it's come up with a short paragraph. I think that's a little more than 40 words, but that'll do anyway. And we can actually go ahead and delete the text that was already there. We've got our new text there. Oops. And let's go ahead and maybe break that up a little bit into two paragraphs. And I think that looks a bit too long there. Maybe just make that shorter. There we go. But I think that looks okay for our um, demonstration. We can go through and do detailed editing, obviously, as well. 
All right, now let's go ahead and actually save it just so we don't lose any of our changes here. And let's go and check our checklist again. So we want to upload an image. It's going to just jump to an image here. We can go ahead and replace our images. Again, we've got our images ready to go in our image gallery already. Okay, so let's go with that one there. Select it and that should actually change it. It's all good. And now we can see that we've passed our next part of the checkbox. I might actually just fast forward ahead and replace these other three images doing the same method. And for this text, I'm going to go ahead and change this as well. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you rather than using the AI writer inbuilt, if you were just using a basic plan, you could just use chat GPT. And I'm going to say write four sections for a garden service website, 40 to 50 words each about planting, pruning, turf and flowers. So that's going to match our pictures here about planting, pruning, turf and flowers. And then we can just fill that in, copy and paste it and replace what we've got here. So I'll go ahead and do that. So let's edit that text. Instead of sustainable, I'm going to say planting. And I'm going to replace this text with this text. Place that out there. Looks good. Although that changed the font, so I'm going to paste that again as plain text. That's better. There we go. Cool. Then I'm just going to repeat that for our other three columns here. I just repeated that process, and now I've got uh, planting, pruning, turf, and flowers to match our images there. So let's check our checkup list again and it's asking us to do our social media icons next so down the bottom we've got our three icons so it's just a case of customizing the links to suit your own page so in my case i'd be like something like gardening um sydney or something that might be our facebook page you go ahead and customize that depending on what your actual site is so and if you didn't have a twitter for example you could just go ahead and remove it if you want something new like if you had a uh, youtube um idea spot for example we could add that on as well it's automatically going to add an icon so pretty easy to do that and that should do it we can close out of there so it has a little warning messages saying that one or more links haven't been assigned so we actually can uh, make sure you've assigned them and it's otherwise it's going to leave you that little warning icon so instagram we'll change that to garden gardening as well um, anyway, once it's been all customized, then the little red uh, marker will go away. So that's handy to know that there's something that hasn't been completed. It's got a little uh, marker there to make you aware of it. And again, heading back to our checklist, check your site on mobile. So that has an icon there. You can actually check the mobile view. So here's just a matter of checking that the mobile layout looks all good as you'd expect. So as you scroll through, if anything looks a little bit off, a lot of times, uh, sometimes the headings might break across the page or um, you might see something that overlaps a bit weirdly, but this actually looks all pretty good. Um, one thing you can do is if you select a selection here, it'll say auto fix layout and that might actually um, automatically tweak the spacing to look a little bit better on mobile. So that actually tightened up the padding around the top and the bottom of our um, layout there. So this little space here, you can do that manually as well. Like if you wanted to tweak that, you can do that um, with that handlebar. Um, or you can actually do the auto fix as well and that tightens it up. Yeah. So that looks a little better on mobile with that auto fix button there. The only main thing I noticed was because we have three images on mobile, it's using a two by two grid. We might actually just edit that section and change the layout there so that uh, I think there's a way we can change this to make it uh, three items per row. Yeah, that's better. We do that, um, that'll be better. And then we can actually just tighten it up. And that's probably better for our mobile layout. But I'm generally pretty happy with this overall. So let's save that on. And then we can head back to the uh, desktop layout there. What else do we have on our checklist? Uh, we can actually go live. So we can just hit go live and that will actually uh, push the subdomain live. Okay, now that we publish, we can view our site. This will load up in a new tab here. And here we go, it looks pretty good so far. We've got a nice little fade in effect as we scroll as well, which is nice. Um, and there's a few things we should still do. I think uh, maybe update the header. They didn't really uh, mention that in the checklist. Also our logo there should be updated. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Back to our editor, this is fairly easy. Okay, first thing we can do is select our header. We've got that edit header option here. Now I did just turn my camera off so we can see all this dialogue, but there's a few options here. The first thing we've got, is the spacing and the layout of our header. So we can actually have the menu to the left with the logo on the left, logo in the middle, um, etc. So I might just move it so the menu is in the middle there. We'll leave the logo there and our socials are here. So that looks pretty good. But yeah, just change that how you like. 
I wanted to change the logo. So under logo, we can actually replace the image there. Let's just replace that with the one we prepared earlier from our library. So I've got that one there. And we can change the size of the logo with this logo width tool here. Just make it, I think I'd like to have it a bit smaller myself. So let's just drag it down and make it a bit smaller. And doing that actually uh, changed the height of the header itself. So if we go to layout, we can add some spacing there to our top and bottom spacing. So we can actually add some spacing there. So that looks a bit better. And the last thing I want to do was the social icons. You'll find that under style. We'll have our options here for a header, a button and social icons. So the button itself, I should show you the button as well. That is a button. You've got an option. You can have a button in your menu. I'd rather not have that. I'd rather just have our logo menu and our social. So I'll turn that off, but you can actually have a button in there as well. Um, but social icons can be customized through here. We can add and remove them. For example, if I want to remove Twitter, I'll delete Twitter and LinkedIn. And then for Facebook and Instagram, customize the links to your accounts um, like that. That's all there is to it. You can also tweak the icon sizing and color and, and add new ones as you wish as well. To work on our menu itself, we head over to the side menu there. We've got pages and navigation here. So this is our menu and it corresponds up here. So we've got home, services, projects, and contact. Under project, we've got a sub menu item there. Sunshine Bay Residence is the project that they've got in the example. So you can actually change the order. For example, if you wanted the contact to be up high, you could move it to the second option. I think usually we have to have contact at the, the last choice there. Um, but anyway, you can move that around as you like. If you wanted this Sunshine Bay Residence just to be a top level item, you could just move it um, to a top level. And that would appear there, but let's leave it where it was before the projects and leave it as a sub item. So to make it a sub item, but you've got to hold that uh, handlebar there and drop it on top of the top item. So then it becomes a sub item. The other thing we can do is if we want to remove the page from the menu, but without deleting the page, what we can do, we can actually move it into the hidden pages. Let me try that again. There we go. For example, this one, you don't really need it to be in the menu because if we go to projects, we can actually see we've got a link there. We can link that over to the uh, Sunshine Bay uh, project page itself. So to do that, we can set up this button to link it to a page. So um, the button text says read more. We can link it to a page. Sunshine Bay residence is the link there. That's already set up automatically, which is good. Uh, but you can link uh, these buttons to any pages you want. So I actually really appreciate having this navigation thing here so we can actually access the pages um, without having to tab around like we have to do when I'm editing WordPress sites usually. Um, I think this is quite good. The other thing I quite like is being able to copy sections from one page to another quite seamlessly. So say if I really like this one and I want to move this to the services page or copy it to the services page, all I have to do is let's open the section there and go ahead and we can copy the whole section. And then we can head over to say our services page. And let's say we want to pop that in or maybe around here. We could just uh, paste the section in. And there we go. Uh, if we hit update, we've got that section copied onto our services page now. So that looks all good. So not to get too distracted here, I'll go back to our home page. There was probably still a little bit we had to cover. So we did our heading and we've done our navigation. What I also wanted to do was just cover the logo and our, we did our top logo there. We didn't do the favicon. That's what I want to do. We've got a default favicon on our tab. We want to change that. So let's go into our website settings and the general settings here got favicon we can add an image there so a favicon is just like a 32 by 32 little image that goes on your tab and i prepared like a, a very simple one there i think it's just the letter i just pop that in and there's a few other things we can add like a link preview image is if you someone hovers on the link it'll show them a link preview image so it's good to have something there i just prepared something there i think um, it needs to be a specific size yeah so looking at hosting as documentation uh 1200 by 630 so if you're using Canva or something like that, I, like I was setting up these icons in Canva, um, very easy to set up a custom size image like that. So those are the basic customizations we need to do. I think there was one other thing as we were talking about those icons. Um, I actually prepared some other icons. We can replace them. These are actually just regular images. So if we edit our image and replace it, I made some little um, simple icons in Canva and we can replace those. Um, and that, they've already got that circle effect applied there. That's just what I wanted to demonstrate with that. Um, it already has those effects. So we can go ahead and replace these with our, our new icons. So I just skipped ahead and did that there. 
And while we're at the footer here, let's actually change that logo as well. So let's get our logo out back again. This is an important one because in this case, they've changed the um, dimensions and the ratio of this image. So you can actually fix that up under more reset image proportions. We'll set that back to default. And then you can actually drag it around. You can see we've got this nice grid that will actually align things really, really easily. I love uh, working with this. Makes makes getting the layout really quite straightforward. And hosting a website template, they've made this really easy to edit. Unlike some other builders who stick their, their footer in, this is really easy. Um, so we could just say website design by, put your own name in here, idea spot in my case, but yeah, you can customize this properly, which is quite good. So I think we've covered nearly how to do everything. I think the other thing was maybe fonts and colors and this parallax background is pretty easy to, to cover as well. I might do that while we're here. Uh, if we edit the section, we've got a background image there. I might replace that rather than having bricks. I've got this leaf that I'm going to replace with. In terms of colors and fonts, this is a gardening website based on the green colors predominantly, but by default we had this purple. I'll show you how to change that here. So the website styles, this is really easy. So this is our palette and we can change all these colors to match what we'd like to do. So probably the easiest way I found was to click change and we can select a custom color or we can just uh, drag this to the position we want. And probably the easiest way to do that is just drag this one rather than being a shade of purple, make it a shade of green. So it'll keep the actual, the tone in the same area, but it'll be, rather than being a shade of purple, it'll be a shade of green there and then click accept. So that looks pretty cool and do the same thing for all the other ones as well. So if it is a shade of red here, let's make it a shade of green and on we go with this. This is just black, so we can leave that. This one has a bit of blue in it. We'd rather make it green. And so that is all there is to that. I'm going to skip ahead and do that for all of these. So that's all done. Now these are all based on shades of green rather than shades of purple. So we can click update. You can see now it's a lot better already. Yeah, so previewing this, I might reload this. And let's load it up. That looks pretty good. I like the fade in effect. And yeah, got that parallax effect. We've got those green colors, we've got our icons. Um, yeah, I think we've covered most of the skills here. Probably the last thing to cover is our contact area. There is a contact form here. I'll show you how to work on that here. So let's head back to our page. And go to contact. So we can get to our form here by uh, clicking edit form. I'll just turn my camera off so I don't get in the way of the actual form here. So we can change the form name. Um, you'll see email here. That's where all the notifications will go. If someone fills in the form, you'll get an email saying you've got a form submission and you can view your form submissions here. No one's filled out any forms yet. So um, there's no data there to view. But actually editing the form is just a matter of going into fields, but name, last name, email, and message. Um, we can add new form fields. Um, short answer paragraph, single choice and multiple choice questions. Um, basically, I probably want to leave that default as a, as a um, custom, as a contact form. Um, but I think probably this short answer one, I don't really need this one. So I might just remove that one. Removing it's just a case of uh, selecting the field that you want to remove and then clicking remove there. So that just cleans the form up a little bit. And then you've got a uh, button uh, choices here. I think default is good still and style. There's a few things we can change. The text field size, for example, if you want to get those bigger or smaller uh, for animations. Uh, I like the fade in, but you can actually have a few other effects here. So the, I, I like how they haven't overwhelmed us with uh, options, but there is a few customizations you can to give it your own flavor. And besides your contact form, there's the, the other form you can add is a subscription form. So I might just add a new section in here just to demonstrate. Um, we can do a subscription form here and we can just put the subscribe to our newsletter for example and we can just have that as a subscription form too so there's your contact form there's a subscription form i wouldn't put these right next to each other i'd put this somewhere else on the website but just for um, the sake of demonstrating how easy that is to set that up um, it's just a matter of, of dropping it in there from our element selection there the other thing is uh these plans business plan and the plan i'm on the cloud plan have this e-commerce feature. So I might make a video about this separately because that's going to take a little bit more detail. But this is actually a pretty nice online store. Um, it accepts all your favorite payments like PayPal and Stripe. It can do variable products. It's really a pretty good replacement for things like Shopify or WooCommerce in a lot of cases. The only thing is, I think there's like a 500 product limit, but um, really fast and really easy to use, especially compared to WooCommerce. I think quite easy to use. Also, because this is being run on hosting as backend rather than your WordPress backend, um, 
the performance I've noticed is probably better um, than running WordPress on a low-end shared host. So I think this is quite a good choice. Um, if you're on one of the cheaper plans, I'd rather be using this online store than WooCommerce. I really think um, most of this uh, is 95% of the use cases I've used WordPress for. I think this is covered um, just in this hosting a builder. If there is some functionality that isn't covered, what you can actually do is you can just embed some code yourself and you can run an external service um, just by embedding it onto the page. So um, that's a nice way of covering anything that hasn't been covered in this builder without adding too much unnecessary complexity. So anyway, let's wrap this up. I'm going to hit update. So now that I've finished building, I think I can give a pretty good review on what I think of this builder. The thing I really liked was its friendly interface. I've used a lot of builders over the last few months, and I think this is probably the friendliest interface I've used. Um, so I really appreciate that customization, being able to lay out um, items by just dragging and dropping them around the page on that grid. Very simple. Um, I really appreciated the performance. People don't talk about the performance of uh, hosting as builder, but I was really surprised by how good this um, built-in content delivery network was. This is set up out of the box. I think they should talk about this more because this was really cool. What I actually mean is if you go into your media library, you can actually see here in the uh, media library, these uh, images are actually being served from um, asset uh, zyrosite.com. So they're being served externally from an external content delivery network. And I was testing uh, this CDN and I was getting speeds of up around one gigabit per second. So you actually get better network performance um, from hosting as a builder than you do through uh, the normal WordPress install that you'll get. Even on the cloud plan, uh, these files were being served uh, even faster than the server that I would use on the cloud plan using WordPress. So actually really good performance uh, for the static assets. The other thing I really liked was how low the usage is when you're using hosting as a website builder. It only uses a few files compared to using WordPress where one uh, website might use an average of like 20,000 files. You can really use up your whole uh, hosting limit quite quickly if you're just building WordPress websites. But if you use a mix, maybe a few WordPress websites and a few hosting a website builder websites, you can actually really take advantage of the limits they give you because they give you up to 100 Websites on those plans, you'll never fit 100 WordPress websites on there. But if you use um, hosting as website builder, um, you can easily put 100 websites on one of those um, cheaper plans. So I think very good use of your resources using um, the hosting and website builder. Now, the main thing I didn't like was compared to WordPress, it's a proprietary closed source product. So the hosting and website builder only runs with hosting it, obviously. So uh, as long as you want to use it, you have to keep uh, subscribing to hosting it. I should note that they do have this ability to export contents to WordPress. This is just exporting the text and the images. So you'd have to reformat it, everything. It would be a lot of work. So you're not completely locked in, but it is um, quite difficult to uh, convert this uh, hosting a site into a WordPress site. But at least there is some way of doing it. But it would have been nice if there was like a static export where you can export the entire HTML, CSS, JavaScript and host it elsewhere if you ever wanted to leave. But I can understand why um, they've, they've limited that sort of export option. In terms of comparing to WordPress, I've written out the main points here. I think probably the WordPress's two key points were huge ecosystem of themes and plugins. So you can get all kinds of functionality through WordPress plugin and theme ecosystem. And it's also open source and portable. So you're not locked into a single host. You can host your WordPress site wherever you want. You can migrate it wherever you want highly customizable, but uh, in terms of cons, performance optimization can be difficult and technical. It can be resource intensive in terms of its hosting. It uses up a large number of files, like I said, around 20,000 files uh, for one WordPress site compared to a, um, a basic static site. You can get away with just for a few files. So um, very resource intensive in comparison and requires ongoing maintenance because you have uh, a database with plugins being updated um, you have to be a bit more active in managing the maintenance and that can be actually costly. If you're trying to manage many, many websites, that can be a, a bit of a time sink. In comparison, using a proprietary web builder like Hostinger here, very much low maintenance. It's all going to be automated on Hostinger's end in this situation. So uh, much like using uh, Wix or Squarespace where you really don't need to do any maintenance, it's all handled um, as part of the package. And you do get the essential features covered. So um, pages, posts, e-commerce, forms, they're all in there, um, but limited in terms of its customization. Like we talked about earlier, it's not portable. So hosting a website builder, you need to be on hosting it to use that. Um, 
thing I like though, um, pre-configured and optimized, you get that content delivery network included as well. I really like that. And the way it saves resources in terms of using a very few number of files compared to WordPress. I really like that in terms of being able to get the most value in terms of cost effectiveness from your hosting plan. And so to wrap this up, I think, who is this for? I'd recommend it for beginners who are new to building a website. I think this is a really friendly way to get started. People who are coming from Wix, Squarespace, or Shopify who are looking for something more cost-effective, especially if you've got multiple websites, getting 100 websites in your plan is not something you get with these guys. And the uh, the price per site, when you look at it like that, extremely cost-effective with hosting. So I really like that in terms of having an easy builder um, in comparison to uh, these kind of products. I think um, hosting it does a much better job in terms of its value. Um, obviously for non-tech and uh, non-WordPress fans, if you've used WordPress and haven't enjoyed it, um, maybe you could try out something like this and see if you get the results you'd like. I think this is going to suit a lot of people who just want a basic um, business website, a basic online store, um, and don't need a whole lot of plugins or um, theme customization, I think. It's really going to get you what you need without too much um, extra bells and whistles. So that is how who I'd recommend it for. Um, you'd really need to be uh, thinking of staying with the host medium to long term. Uh, like if you want to stay for ne the next three or four years, I think that would be the sort of time frame at, at least. And then you could uh, add up where you are after that time frame. If you want to rebuild with a different system or um, scale up with hosting or on a on a higher plan, maybe, but. Um, you'd want to be thinking about medium to long term staying with the same host uh, to make this worthwhile. And finally, I think there is a use for designers who need something um, as an alternative to WordPress. Maybe you're doing a few brochure sites and using WordPress is going to be overkill. You want something a little bit uh, more low use in terms of resources. I think this is a good way of um, getting uh, a good use out of a, a web host uh, for hosting brochure type websites where you don't want to have to be doing ongoing maintenance where it doesn't really need to be done. So that's pretty much a wrap. I think if, again, if you want to check out this uh, hosting a website, build a link is in the description and don't forget to use my idea spot coupon code for that extra little bit of discount. But um, I, as a WordPress fan, I enjoyed using this for a change, but let me know what you think in the comments, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.